You can cut down on a lot of typing by using a feature called autocorrect. That's the name of the worksheet we're viewing here in our chapter one file. And there's some other techniques as well in this movie that we're going to show you that will reduce that data entry time. I'm about to type company for a column heading, but I mistype it. C-O-M-A-N-Y, I press enter, and Excel automatically corrects the spelling. And built in are quite a few other corrections of this type. Let's take a look at the File tab in the ribbon, and then go down to Options. Under Proofing, you'll see a feature called Autocorrect. And what we see here is a huge list of entries. Now, some of them are for special symbols, but if you type A-B-O-T-U, you probably meant to spell about, and Excel will automatically correct that. And here's a huge list of entries. Those are automatic. But a different way to use this is to say, I type a word frequently, telecommunications. I need it all the time. So here I'm typing it correctly. Now, it's not because I mistype this or misspell it. I don't want to type these 18 letters all the time. I want to say every time I type QT, now if you're going to set up one of these, Q is a good letter because it doesn't appear that often. Usually there's a U behind it. Every time I type QT, I want to see telecommunications. Add that to the built-in list. Click OK. Click OK. So I'm about to type it here. I don't want to type those 18 letters. I'll put in QT. Enter. If I want to capitalize, capital QT. If I want the word department behind it, I'll press space and type in DEPT. Eventually, I'd make the column wider, of course. So that's going to be really handy at times. And imagine if I need to spell this frequently or this, any one of these. So we could have a whole series of these if we wished. At some point, of course, it'd be difficult to remember the shortcuts, but that's easily set up and handled. It's in your Excel settings. It'll work with any workbook. Now, suppose I need this list frequently. What I've been doing is opening this file and copying it. What if I could, like other entries, like months and days, simply type in one of the entries, like ADC, drag from the corner and get all the others. So the same idea as we have with months and dates, we can automatically enter one and get the others. Let's highlight this list here and create what's called a custom list. Once again, back to the File tab, all the way down to Options, and under Advanced in the Excel Options dialog box, scroll nearly to the bottom, and we see Edit Custom Lists. I've highlighted those entries in the background. Off to the right, I will Import. There are four existing lists already. You see them over here. You probably use them at different times. Click OK. These will stay in our Excel settings indefinitely. So in the future, in this worksheet, in any worksheet, in any workbook, regardless of whether this is opened or not, I need a list here. I'll type the first one, although you can type any of them. Drag from the lower right-hand corner, we'll get all the others. If I drag too far, it'll just repeat at the end. Get rid of that. That's going to be really handy. I might also do the same thing with the letters here. Maybe I frequently need to put these letters down a column or across a row. Same general idea. We could highlight these, do the same thing that we just did with this list. Now, there are built-in special formats for social security and phone number. Suppose you find yourself frequently typing these with the dashes or phone numbers with parentheses and a space and a dash. Just type the numbers after applying special formats. I'm going to right-click column H and go to Format Cells. Select the Number tab if it's not already selected. Special, Social Security Number, OK. So I'm going to type in a Social Security Number. This is an invalid one. But it has nine characters, nine numbers. Automatically, once the column width is adjusted, we'll get this. And from now on, anytime we're editing one of these or typing in a different one, in this column H here, we're always going to see the dashes. Notice when I double click here, we don't see them. But uh, they're there in the format. And the same general idea with phone numbers here. I type in a phone number. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to have the appropriate characters in it here too. I'll right click column I, go to format cells, also number tab, special, phone number, OK, and there we see it. So from now on, we'll type 10 characters instead of 14 and get this kind of a display. And there's a similar setup there for zip code as well. And in a different vein, anytime you're working with dates in a date column like this here, make the column wider than usual. Now, I haven't done that just yet, but 
How about this scenario? This November 11th down here should have been the 30th. So I double click, I highlight the 11, and instead of typing 30, I type 31. Enter. Now you know that's not a valid date, but nothing really changes there. But if the column were wider, that immediately would have jumped out. That's a, an impossible date. Excel recognizes these. There's another one up here in row three here. Instead of February 26th, what if that's the 29th in a non-leap year? So those impossible dates are going to be exposed immediately if the column is wider. Now eventually, of course, you'd make everything correct and then make the column a standard width. So I've seen various shortcuts here around the idea of let's shorten the amount of time it takes to enter data using autocorrect and some of the special formats built into Excel.